ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ben Rosenfeld. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. We're going to have a good time. You know, like a, a lot of comedians, they, they want to re record their albums in sold out comedy clubs or in arenas. I said, do you know Madison Square Garden? Let's do it three blocks away. <laughs> above a sushi shop. Let's do it that way. But uh, so, yeah, uh, if you don't know, my name's Ben and uh, you can't tell right away, but actually I'm an immigrant. I was born in the worst part of Russia. Uh, Russia. <laughs> Do we have any other immigrants in here? Oh, wow, like 10, 12 people. Okay, is this a comedy show or Homeland Security Detention Center? This is nice. But uh, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm an immigrant uh, and a nerd uh, and a Jew. Uh, I'm what Fox News would call a uh, triple threat. <laughs> You know, being from Eastern Europe, that, that means I'm still a white male. But being foreign-born, it's like my social justice warrior invisibility cloak. Because they're like, you're an evil white man! And I'm like, immigrant! And they're like, damn it. My point is, not all white men are evil. No, only white men born in America. But uh, Russia's evil too, maybe more so. Like, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, in Russian universities, the easiest major is always political science. Because the answer to any question is, you poison them. <laughs> you guys read in here, I like that. You're good readers. But, you know, it's like, uh, Congress won't pass your bill? Poison them. A Russian military officer turns out to be a British spy. Poison him and his daughter. Extra credit. <laughs> or uh, your spouse lets dinner get cold. <laughs> no, you forgive them. <laughs> and then when they're not expecting it, you poison their mom. <laughs> but I enjoyed your enthusiasm for poison. You're now an honorary Russian. Welcome, comrade. <laughs> yeah, when, uh, when people hear me speaking Russian, they think I'm plotting an election. <laughs> so the mess of them, I'll be speaking English, and then answer my phone of, Da, что такое? Почему мне звонишь? Причем здесь Donald Trump? <laughs> pepperoni, I wanted pepperoni. <laughs> They don't have it? Well, then poison them. <laughs> There's gonna be like 15 more poison jokes, by the way. Uh, we might as well make this a drinking game. Every time I say poison, you drink. Yes. Poison. Great. One. About seven people playing. Okay, cool. Uh, I should warn you, though, by the end of this, you might get alcohol poisoning, as how this <laughs> goes. Look, if some of you don't laugh louder, I'll poison you, okay? <laughs> That is someone who's been poisoned before, apparently, is what that was. It's like PTSD. Here's how Russian textbooks describe different forms of government. They're like, uh, in a dictatorship, the dictator poisons everyone. In socialism, people poison each other. And in a democracy, Facebook poisons everyone. <laughs> the fact that we laughed, clapped, and got a little sad. <laughs> Yeah, it was the five stages of grief all in one. We did it, everyone. We did it. I've been told my jokes are very clever. Which means they're funnier the second time you hear them. I've been told my jokes are very clever. That was a test. You passed. Good job. You passed. I don't know about you, but like, I've always wished I was dumber, because then I'd be happier. One other person is brilliant in here, apparently. But no, like, I don't know you, but, you know, like, I'm no genius, but I'm usually in the top 10% of things. Uh, except staying humble. <laughs> See, like, top 10% is I was smart enough to get into a PhD program at Caltech. 
yet dumb enough to quit to focus on comedy. <laughs> Please laugh louder. <laughs> oh, uh, ch check this out. Uh, re recently, a, uh, recently, a pregnant friend of mine, she emailed me a link to a live stream of her baby's gender reveal party. Oh, because oh, the correct response, yes. <laughs> Yeah, because the only thing that revealed is I need new friends. Because that's not what I meant when I told her I like watching webcam girls. A lot of perverts in here, nice. Now people are having gender reveal parties and baby showers. Like, that's too much celebrating. Like, do you know what a kid costs? You should probably be at work. And why, why is it that sex and gender means the same thing, but a gender reveal party is so different from a sex party? <laughs> so I'm watching this live stream, and at one point my pregnant friend goes, the sonogram claims it's a boy, but we won't know for sure for a few years. <laughs> because he's not old enough to speak and decide for himself. And I'm thinking, there's no way I'm going to a second gender reveal party. <laughs> By the way, clap if you have kids in here. Yeah. Hey, that's a lot of people. Okay, very nice. I like that. You see, uh, my wife and I were thinking of becoming parents. Because we have a one-year-old, so... <laughs> Should probably make a final decision soon. Before the baby forms memories, that'd be... responsible. Thank you for understanding that this isn't literal. Yeah, I love my daughter. Uh, now. Yeah, I've loved her ever since I saw her. Sleep through the night, that's when... my heart melted. Yeah, I love my daughter, but I also love laughs, so thank you for not making me choose between them. Because when you stare at me and don't laugh, you make me want to go home and shake my baby, okay? <laughs> thank you, most of you care about my daughter's welfare. And that's obviously sarcasm, I'm not going to shake my baby. No, don't shake your miracle. I'm going to shake my wife. Yeah, like a man. <laughs> Whose woman is into choking? I love you too, you know? It's a fun joke to find out who's into choking. Most of us, okay, cool. It's, it's gonna be fun. But uh, I'll share this. So, uh, you know, re recently, re recently I couldn't get a babysitter. And, and honestly, like, one thing I've been struggling with is, like, how do I find a babysitter I can trust? So what I've started doing, and parents feel free to use this, this is my new screening process. I say, can I see your cell phone? They hand it to me. If your phone screen's cracked, then you can't watch my child. Because if you can't catch a phone, you can't catch a baby. <laughs> if your phone screen isn't cracked, you also can't watch my child. Because you let me hold your phone, that's bad judgment. Yeah, I just sent all your nude pics to our previous babysitting applicant. Don't worry, she can't see them. Her screen's cracked. <laughs> yeah, so I couldn't get a babysitter, so I brought the baby with me to the comedy club. Oh. Yeah, and what I used to do, I'd have whatever woman would go, aw, I'd have that comedian watch my baby. <laughs> but then I realized that's reinforcing the patriarchy. So now what I do instead, I find the biggest, blackest guy I can and have him watch my baby. Because I know he's got to be extra careful. <laughs> It's gonna get darker from here by a lot. <laughs> yeah, so I take the baby with me and I, I give him to my friend. And, and as soon as I give my daughter to my friend, the baby starts crying. So immediately I get accusatory with my friend. I'm like, she was fine a second ago. What'd you do? Your act? <laughs> and he doesn't hesitate. He says, no, actually, I did your act. Hey, you know, yeah, we're messing with each other, but you know, I, I get it. Like, I remember, like, back when I was single, whenever I'd hear someone's kid cry, I think, like, 
What kind of horrible human isn't taking care of their child? But now I'm a dad, when I hear someone's kid cry, I'm like, that baby sounds like a dick. <laughs> like uh, yesterday, all in two minutes, my baby, she laughed, cried, screamed, spit up, and fell asleep. All in two minutes. And I thought, no wonder she's so tired. For some young women in their early 20s, that's a full Friday night. <laughs> Why, Becky, why? Blech. <laughs> Thank you, that took years of acting training. <laughs> I'm about to go on stage, and my, I hear my baby crying in the other room. And honestly, like, I love when my daughter cries in public, because I know other people are listening. So I use it as an excuse to complain about my problems. You know, the baby's like, wah. And I'm like, you're right, mommy was mean to dad. <laughs> wah. Yeah, I don't know why she won't let daddy drink his special juice before noon. <laughs> wah. Well, maybe daddy wouldn't be so thirsty if mommy touched him more often. But uh, yeah, so I, I go on stage and my baby's crying. And you know, I, I, love my, I love my daughter, I love my daughter. So when I hear those stories where a baby won't stop crying and the mom loses her shit and drives her car into a lake, like, I just, yeah, I can't, I can't imagine why that's so rare. <laughs> so I'm on stage, my baby's crying like super hard. And honestly, my daughter's great. She rarely cries that hard. Like, the only time she really cried was when I had to take her to a doctor to get a couple vaccinations. And after her vaccine, she spent the rest of the day crying. Which was really surprising, because I don't remember it hurting when I got autism. <laughs> but it was either that or measles, so I chose to let her live. I chose life. <laughs> And obviously I'm making fun of that. I don't actually believe that vaccines cause autism. No, I know they do. I feel it in my aorta. Now I'm being sarcastic, but you know, just to be safe for myself, I've stopped doing vaccinations because of the autism. Because I don't want to get any more of it. It's good that you laugh there, but it also hurts my feelings a little bit. See, I, I feel I have just the right amount of autism. Which is like having the right amount of alcohol. You know, a little bit and you're fun and focused, but too much and you can't talk. <laughs> Here's how you know I'm actually on the spectrum. I kept going on and on about that, although most of you were not on board. <laughs> that is bad social skills. <laughs> if anyone needs me, I'll be in the corner counting toothpicks. <laughs> Yeah, I have the kind of autism where you don't think I do until I say it, and then you're like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> so I get off stage, and I take my daughter right away, and instantly, as soon as I'm holding her, she stops crying, which is super sweet. You know, so I'm holding my daughter in my arms, and I realize I've created this beautiful baby girl, as well as four comedy albums and a best-selling book. <laughs> And when I hold my daughter in my arms, I know without a doubt that of all my creations, she is definitely top five. <laughs> Have you heard my last album? It's a miracle. <laughs> yeah, so I'm holding her and she's calm. And my, my secret to a calm baby is whenever she gets upset, I'll just pick her up and down three times and she's all better. And I wish you could do that with adults, right? <laughs> like, she's leaving me, she's taking the house and the kids. <laughs> Ooh, bubbles. <laughs> of course, if this was true, therapists would be out of business. And fat people would be inconsolable. <laughs> uh, uh. I'm sorry, buddy, there's no cure. <laughs> So 
So I'm holding my daughter in my arms and she's happy now. And that's when I realized, that's when I realized comedy is the only profession where you could be like, hey, watch my kid real quick. I got to go work for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, only in comedy can you do that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, and stripping too. Yeah, definitely, definitely stripping. You know, it's like, why am I grinding to the Sesame Street theme song? Because it helps my baby fall asleep. <laughs> I just realized I was twerking while saying grinding, but that's because I don't do either, apparently. <laughs> the best part about being a stripper mom is you can be talking to your baby and the customer at the same time, saying the same thing. And they both think you're only talking to them. You know, it's like, who's a big boy? Yes, you are. Here, have a booby. <laughs> oh no, you got it all over mama. <laughs> I don't know why my stripper voice was deeper than my regular voice. <laughs> Jobs. But by the way, clap if you like your job. Okay, that's a lot of people. This is an undercover boss. You don't have to lie to me or anything. Okay, and then clap if you don't like your job. Okay, about four very honest people. Okay, I like that. Good, good. Is everyone else unemployed or a student? What's going on? I know, I know there's more than 12 people in here. <laughs> One person enjoyed attendance jokes the most. Um, <laughs> See, uh, I, never, I never understood why people would go to a job they hate for eight hours every day. <laughs> then I had a child. <laughs> and I love my daughter. I love my daughter. But I love her way more when I haven't seen her for eight days. <laughs> I miss the soul-sucking quiet of a cubicle. <laughs> Some people, they compare cubicles to prisons, which I guess makes sense, because there's no loud little children in prison. No, just grown men. Calling each other daddy, but it's different, it's different. It's a fun one to find out who's been to jail. Not as many as I would have expected, or who I would have expected. That's, that's fine. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, b before kids, my wife, she wanted to have two kids, and I wanted one. And now that we have one, I want two, and my wife wants none. <laughs> yeah, before kids, you know, I used to fantasize about doing dirty things with my wife, but now that I have a baby, you know what I fantasize about? Sleeping through the night. <laughs> yeah, it's like, do I want to do reverse cowgirl? Uh, if it'll help me sleep through the night. <laughs> Should we have a threesome? Uh, only if everyone promises to go to sleep right after. <laughs> Should the three I be with my wife and another woman or my wife and another man? Uh, it should be where I was going to take care of the baby. <laughs> so I can sleep through the night. But now having a baby and a family, it's a beautiful thing. Wear a condom. It's so precious. <laughs> but the thing is, like, it's turned my wife into a bit of a liar, okay? Because my wife, she used to do this thing where she'd wake me for sex. I mean, not as often as I would want, but, uh... Often enough to get me to propose. <laughs> the women have some very knowing laughs right now. Yeah, she used to wake me for sex, but now, now she does this thing where she acts like she's waking me for sex. She's like, are you up? Are you ready? I'm like, I'm so ready. She's like, good, go check on the baby. <laughs> I need to sleep through the night. But you know, with a baby, like, you feel more love. You feel more all sorts of emotions. But the thing is, like, I'm a man and Russian. Emotions are not my thing. Like, I feel emotions the way a woman feels a small dick. Like, yeah, technically it's inside, but is it? I can't feel anything. Is something wrong with me? Should I get new drapes? Oh, thank God it's over. <laughs> I bet some men are getting very nervous right now. <laughs> it's fine. 
But yeah, you know, you feel all sorts of emotions with a baby. Like, uh, for example, a couple months back, my mom, she was watching the baby while I was home, and the baby started crying. So my mom yelled at the baby for crying, which is crazy. So I yelled at my mom for yelling at the baby, and my mom started crying. <laughs> then my wife yelled at me for yelling at my mom, and I started crying. And my wife's never seen me get that emotional before, so she starts crying too. <laughs> so there we are, we're all standing around sobbing like we just won an Oscar. <laughs> I look back at the baby, now she's asleep. Like, this is supposed to be a bundle of joy. You know, we're crying, we're screaming, we're at each other's throat. Like, my baby's turned us all against each other. And that's when it dawned on me. My baby's the next Trump. <laughs> So I got her a Twitter account. <laughs> and I went to her head because I tried to feed her the next day and she just went, nah, nah, that's fake milk. <laughs> and she was right, it was formula. She was right, the media really was against her. <laughs> but I know we're, we're lucky in that all, all our parents, both our parents still watch the baby. And, and a, a little while back, my dad watched the baby and he did a great job. But when I came back, the baby was sleeping in the middle of his bed, surrounded by pillows. <laughs> Most of you seem to know, a few of you who don't, pillows suffocate babies. And a, a little backstory, back when my daughter was like a month old, my dad drove her, but instead of putting the seatbelt on the car seat, he put the seatbelt on her neck. <laughs> yeah, which is very dangerous and completely ineffective. You know, like putting the seatbelt on the neck instead of a car seat, that's like putting the condom on the balls instead of the shaft. <laughs> Which is how I have a baby. <laughs> I practice safe teabagging. <laughs> I love that the older people up front laugh the hardest on teabagging out of anyone. I, that's how you keep shit fresh. I like that, sir. I like that. That's good. <laughs> So yeah, you know, when the seatbelt thing happened, I yelled at my dad, and he said if I yell again, he won't watch the baby anymore. So back to the pillow suffocation, I learned my lesson. So I just said very calmly, I'm like, hey, for next time, please don't put pillows around the baby. It's dangerous. That's all I said, but he still got upset. And like, look, I understand when I talk all monotone, I give off serial killer vibe. <laughs> I get that. I feel like I've tried yelling, I've tried begging, I've tried whispering. My dad just won't listen to me. So the only thing left to do is poison him. <laughs> In Russia, when you call poison control, they answer the phone with, oh no, you're still alive? <laughs> Thank you for reporting product defects. <laughs> Stay where you are, we'll send someone to finish job. <laughs> oh, if you're ever in Russia and the government's after you, maybe because you told too many poison jokes. If you're in Russia and the government's after you, the only safe place to eat is McDonald's. Because the workers are, are like, there's no need to listen to President Putin and poison him. Our food is poison enough. <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm drugging it. <laughs> yeah, see, uh, my, my family, we came to this country when I was a little kid because my dad didn't think I was tough enough to make in the Russian army. That laugh hurt. You're not nice right there. That's not the funny part. You're very mean. Yeah, like, see, uh, once as a toddler, I skinned my knee and started crying. And my dad was like, he can't even pedal tricycle. <laughs> He'll never be able to wipe out the whole village. <laughs> yeah, when we came to America, my dad said I could either learn violin or kickboxing. I said violin, so my dad goes, okay, lesson one. Boom. <laughs> Violinists get bullied. <laughs> the 
first learn kickboxing. <laughs> so for the next two years, my dad paid a grown man to fight me in my basement. <laughs> it was like Fight Club, where it turned out the guy hitting me the whole time was my dad. <laughs> That's why the first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club to child services. <laughs> so my, my dad and his wife, they have this cat that I'm horribly allergic to. Yeah, I'm allergic to this cat. And, and you know, whenever I come over, my dad refuses to lock the cat in the bedroom because what if he has to go to bathroom? And I'm like, just put the litter box in the bedroom. And my dad says, no, he'll get confused. <laughs> And I'm like, just tell me you don't love me. <laughs> that is one person with a fractured relationship with their dad that really enjoyed that one. That is, that was. But uh, yeah, so, you know, I, I, I have tried, I, I've tried taking 24-hour Claritin, and it helped, but 12 hours later, my dad's wife gave me a second 24-hour Claritin. Yeah, and I got so sleepy, I almost fell asleep while driving. Like, I'm pretty sure the cat paid the wife to kill me. <laughs> Here's how you know you're a loser, is when your best drug overdose story is about clarity. <laughs> but Claritin's no joke. Like, you know, like, Claritin, if overdosing on Claritin makes you so sleepy, it should be called the low-budget Bill Cosby. <laughs> that joke was sponsored by Zyrtec. <laughs> But yeah, every time I come over to my dad's place, this cat comes right up to me. My dad picks him up, brings him to the other side of the house, and the cat comes right back at me. This cat will not be stopped. Like Harvey Weinstein. Oh. I knew the second time would be too much, but I pushed it on you anyway. Like Kevin Spacey. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, you know, because my dad's Russian, he, he's like super paranoid about the government. So whenever we talk on the phone, we have to use super secret code words. So when he says, the raft is in the ocean, that means he moved the money offshore. And when he says, I like Igor, that means don't trust Igor. Or if he says, don't trust Igor, that means don't trust Igor. You should never trust anyone named Igor. If you remember nothing else from tonight, that is a very good life skill. Or, you know, if my dad says, we're all going to die, that means I love you. And if he says, I love you, that means Igor's in the ocean. Probably from poison. But uh, hey, immigrants, we have been getting a bad rap lately. Uh, but I don't know if you know, but immigrants, we actually commit fewer crimes than people born in America. Yeah, that's right. We finally found something that Americans can do better than immigrants. <laughs> I don't think it's because immigrants are more law-abiding. No, I just think it's really hard to rob someone when they can't understand what the hell you're saying. <laughs> you know, it's like, give me your bunny. Look, kids, it's an angry magician. <laughs> Of course, an enterprising immigrant, they could have a gun in one hand and a phone with Google Translate in the other. <laughs> then they'd be like, Give me your money, bitch. <laughs> Just not as intimidating. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know the other immigrants in the crowd, but uh, whenever people find out I wasn't born in America, they always say the same thing. They're like, you know you can't be president, right? But you could be vice president. Yeah, I feel like that's the only thing some Americans know about immigrants. <laughs> well, that and that some immigrants think deodorant is optional. <laughs> I'm not naming nationalities. <laughs> Indians make great doctors. Why did you guys laugh at that? Oh, did you think I was... <laughs> that is messed up. Everyone knows it's Pakistanis. <laughs> who make great doctors. <laughs> See, uh, Russians, Russians, we smell great because when we run out of deodorant, we use vodka. <laughs> it kills all the smelly bacteria. And when we run out of vodka, we drink deodorant. <laughs> psst, psst, psst. 
tastes like vanilla. <laughs> so uh, recently I'm in the car with a newer friend of mine, and for the first time I mentioned I'm foreign born. And right away he goes, you know you can't be president, right? And I'm like, it's not like you're one step away from being elected either. <laughs> you're the one driving this Uber. <laughs> now take me to the pharmacy, I'm out of vodka. But, uh, I'll, I'll share this. So uh, re recently I, I was driving and I hit a car, I hit a BMW. Totally my fault in front of witnesses. And luckily nobody's injured. And it turns out I hit a Chinese couple on a dealership test drive. It gets better because right away the dealer comes out and he's like, my friend, let's not call the cops, just follow me to the dealership. And I'm like, yeah, I'm over fuck the police. Fucking with me because I'm a teenager with a little bit of gold and a pager. I'll stop, sorry. I realize NWA lyrics for me sound straight out of Connecticut. I know, I know. So we go to the dealership, and it turns out it's not a BMW dealership, but it's K's used cars. Where cars is spelled with a K. For quality. Also with a K. So this is where I learned that this Chinese guy is new to America, doesn't have car insurance, and K's cars claims, KKK, <laughs> that they only have car insurance when a car's on the lot. So now this car accident is no longer my fault. Because it's way more legal to drive without car insurance than it is to make a U-turn through 12 lanes of traffic. <laughs> yeah, I used to think I could only do a U-turn through one lane of traffic. But thanks to self-help books and the power of positive thinking, <laughs> Now I can do 12 lanes and a divider. Because dividers are just barriers to our dreams. Like, do you understand? I went through this whole range of emotion from the panic of getting caught red-handed to the relief of getting away with it scot-free. So now, I know how O.J. Simpson felt after the acquittal. Do you understand the irony? I'm such a bad driver, I hit an Asian person. <laughs> but Asians are so bad at driving it was still their fault <laughs> USA <laughs> so I guess the moral of the story is whenever I'm rolling keep looking in the mirror and ears on cue yo so I can hear ya <laughs> you have no idea how hard it was to find two NWA lyrics <laughs> that a guy as white as me could say out loud <laughs> the struggle is real <laughs> But yeah, so after that, like, you know, I don't like driving. I hate driving. So I try to take public transit as much as possible. And I don't know about you, but whenever I'm on a crowded bus or train, and whenever it's crowded and I see a gross person sitting in a seat and they get up, I won't sit in that seat. Although I know logically at some point, a gross person has sat in every seat of the entire transit system. <laughs> Hell, that's probably true of any public space. A gross person might have sat in your seat at some point. They might be sitting there right now. <laughs> so uh, a couple months back, I'm sitting on a crowded train. I get up and I notice no one took my seat. And I was like, I gotta turn my life around. I showered, my clothing's normal. Can they see my soul? So I stopped taking public transit. And that, now I take Ubers. Do, do we Uber or just drunk drive? What are we doing in here? Drunk Little of both, drunk drive. Uh, yeah, see, I, I feel like when you get in an Uber, there's a certain etiquette, right? Like, you know, I chat for a minute, then I put in my headphones and text my wife, oh my God, my driver won't stop talking. Which is similar to my post-sex etiquette. I chat for a minute, then text my Uber driver, oh my God, my wife won't stop talking. <laughs> So uh, a little while back, I was having such a good conversation with my Uber driver that I felt rude putting in my headphones. Have you had this happen? One very emphatic no? Okay. And, well, it's fine when it's like a 10 minute drive, but this was a two hour drive from the airport to a gig. And I was in the middle of the Game of Thrones finale. And then an hour into this drive, my Uber gets into a car crash. 
Yeah, luckily nobody's injured. And even better, now I don't have to give the driver a tip. <laughs> Not to be a Jew, but uh... <laughs> that walks like a duck and talks like a duck. Like, hi, I'm everyone. Hi. <laughs> So, as the cop fills out paperwork, me and the driver have even more to talk about. So I still can't put in my headphones. And, you know, whenever I'm talking to an Uber driver or a coffee barista, I always take out one headphone, because I'm not rude. But I keep the other one in, because I still want this to end. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, have you ever taken an Uber from the scene of a car accident with your old Uber? <laughs> I imagine it's like having your new spouse pick you up from the funeral of your old spouse. <laughs> the new one's gonna be careful. <laughs> so, that's where it gets controversial in the back. Welcome to the show, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> Sitting at the first 30 minutes, now you're like, okay, now we're invested. <laughs> yeah, so, as I'm about to call the new Uber, the cop offers me a ride. And I'm thinking, great, I can finally put in my headphones. But this cop, she starts chatting me up. She asks me where I'm headed. And I tell her, I'm going to go perform for Russian Jews who are really bad laughers. So honestly, I don't ever be back at the car accident. <laughs> like, uh, you know, usually when Russians watch me, they just nod but don't laugh. <laughs> like, true, but why funny? <laughs> Wife talk too much after sex, your point? <laughs> Two drink minimum, what is this, preschool? <laughs> I came to watch play, not put the baby to sleep. <laughs> like, uh, the, the last time I performed for Russian Jews, it actually started out really well, better than this even. Now, everyone's laughing, and one guy, he's laughing and clapping, so I think I'm doing extra well with him. Turns out, there was a fly. He was... <laughs> killing a fly. And then there was this other lady in the front row, she was laughing while saying, stop it, and continuing to laugh. <laughs> she was like, ha ha ha, stop it, ha ha ha. And I told her, this is why men get confused sometimes. <laughs> Please don't protest me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, my point is, you guys are a fantastic audience, but sometimes I perform for people that make me wish I was back at the car accident. <laughs> so, you know, the cop, she gives me a ride, but not to the gig, it was too far away. She drops me off at the closest Tim Hortons, which is like a Canadian Dunkin' Donuts. And at Tim Hortons, I ate five donuts. Because I just cheated deaf, so I'm no longer afraid of saturated fat. <laughs> yeah, Tim Hortons, it's named after a Canadian hockey player who died in a car crash. <laughs> no joke there, just an ironic Snapple fact. <laughs> so I eat my donuts, get in my new Uber, the driver asks me how my day's going. And as I'm in the middle of telling him this whole story, he puts in his headphones. <laughs> So I poisoned him. <laughs> In Russia, you could tell how big time of a politician you are based on what method they use to kill you. You know, like a gun to the back of the head, you're a basic bitch. But if they use polonium-210 from some secret underground lab, you could have been the next Russian president. Your kids will be bragging to your grandkids Grandpa got the Rolls Royce of poison. <laughs> One day, they'll write hip hop musical about him. <laughs> That's right, this is the closest you're gonna get to seeing Hamilton tonight. I just saved you $400, you are welcome, you are welcome. But uh, you, you should know, I, I feel you're, you're learning lots about Russians. You should know, there's two types of Russians. There's like the lawyer, engineer, hacker, uh, usually Russian Jews like me. And then there's the Russian for when you need a kidney and you're not on the list. <laughs> that guy is useful. <laughs> He'll get you like four kidneys and a loaf of bread. <laughs> four kidneys and a loaf of bread. That's a sandwich you can't get at Quiznos. <laughs> Maybe Kwasnovsky's. <laughs> not a real place. Please don't look it up on your phone. So. 
I, I am on my phone too much, though. Anyone else want to admit? Yeah, some sad hand raises. And some of you on your phone right now is what this feels like. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my phone too much, but I'm trying to be better. You know, like I'm reading a book called uh, Digital Minimalism about using my phone less. But I'm reading it on a Kindle. It's a lateral move. <laughs> but if I really wanted to use my phone less, I, I, I'd move to someplace that limits data, like Cuba. <laughs> or T-Mobile. <laughs> The other week, I'm walking down the street. I see a guy in a phone booth. I'm like, oh, you're using a pay phone. You must be a fugitive. <laughs> or T-Mobile customer. <laughs> he says, no, I just need a quiet place to do drugs. <laughs> Please don't call the cops. I'm like, don't worry, I have T-Mobile. I can't. <laughs> call the cops. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm concerned though. I'm afraid that, you know, I'm always on my phone that I'm afraid I'm gonna leave my daughter somewhere. Cause I'm, I'm always checking the thing. Like, here's how bad my addiction's gotten. I wake up in the morning. First thing I do, I check on my phone. Then an hour later, I check on my baby. <laughs> Using my phone's Wi-Fi camera. When we live in a studio. <laughs> and my baby's addicted too. You know, she's a year old, so she's saying little words like hi and bye. And, she thinks any rectangular object is a phone. Like, she'll pick up my wallet, hi. Remote control, hi. Ice cream sandwich, hi. The only thing she picks up and doesn't say hi into is my phone because I have T-Mobile. So, uh, so to keep my daughter safe, what I've started doing, now I keep my cell phone around my daughter's neck. Because that way I won't forget her in a hot car. Because I'm not going to leave without my cell phone. I'm just like, oh no, my baby. <laughs> Plus, keeping my cell phone around her neck, it builds her neck muscles. So if someone else leaves her in a hot car, she'll be able to headbutt her way out. Yeah, I'm training a survivor. And I mean, sure, look, keeping my phone around her neck in the back seat, yeah, of course it makes it harder for me to text and drive, but... I manage, you know. The key is to just not look for a couple seconds and believe in God, that's all. I like that most of you get this and some of you are horrified right now. Again, this isn't literal, I only play a sociopath on stage. I'm saying horrible things to make fun of horrible things. I think by now you understand that I have a good heart. For sale on Russian eBay. I am a good person. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like I'm always on my phone, but I hate actually talking on the phone. I think it's because I'm a millennial. I find it very intrusive. Like if I ever worked at a suicide hotline and someone called me up like, I want to end it. I'd say, you could have just texted me that. <laughs> if you call me again, I'll kill you. <laughs> I realize this is getting too dark for some of you right now, but this is hilarious in Russia, okay? <laughs> you need to be more sensitive to my culture. <laughs> yeah, they, they've actually done studies where the birth of your first child decreases your happiness more than unemployment, divorce, or death of a spouse. Yeah, so you know you're supposed to baby-proof the home by covering electrical sockets, closing bleach bottles, and hiding sharp objects? Turns out, it's for you. It's a dark one, but a fun one. So why, why not? I'll, I'll, we can decide. I'll let you decide. Do you want to hear dark jokes or Disney jokes? Yell it out. Dark or Disney? Sounded like 15 to 1 for dark and one nice lady. Please, Disney, please, I can't take anymore. All right, we'll go with dark, but dark wins. But from now on, you guys can't hold back because you chose this. And for those of you who stayed quiet, this was your Me Too moment and you blew it. In this political climate, I refuse to hug my daughter until she's old enough to give her verbal consent. The 
The other day, I'm alone with her. She has a dirty diaper. I say, do I have your permission to touch you and change it? She goes, Pfft. I'm like, I guess you're sitting in it then. Because yeah, sometimes my daughter, she'll stick out her arms, but I can't be certain what she wants. Later on, later on, I won't be able to defend myself of, no, 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 your honor, you don't understand. She was sucking her thumb, so she was practically asking for it. You guys want it dark, it's getting fucking dark. You did this to yourselves. I'm pretty sure that whoever invented the martini shaker must have had a small child at home. They were like, I just need a way to get out all this aggression. Now, where'd I put that martini shaker? It's my favorite joke right now. <laughs> Do you want to hear the darkest thing I ever said? Of course. Yeah. About four people. I like how two minutes ago, 12 people were like, woo, darkness. And three jokes into dark, you're like, maybe we made a horrible mistake. <laughs> So uh, my wife, she was super excited to find out we were having a girl because she thought that meant we'd save money on the circumcision. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? Now we gotta pay for a flight to the Middle East or Africa. That is... <laughs> Way more expensive. <laughs> And obviously, I don't condone that. That's not my culture. I don't condone it. I'm just raising awareness. I feel most of you don't think that raised awareness. Well, guess what? Neither do any of your Facebook posts. That was my touchdown dance. It raised awareness for not raising awareness. I feel like some of you are regretting that we chose dark right now. But I'm gonna do the one Disney joke I have, and then you'll see you made a good decision. <laughs> Some of you might be thinking this voting was rigged. You might also be correct. Welcome to America. <laughs> that was the line, the circumcision joke. You're like, okay, that's a fun one, but American voting, you've gone too far. <laughs> But I, you know, I've only been a dad for a little over a year, and already I'm making terrible dad jokes. Like sometimes my daughter, she'll get the hiccups, and I'll be like, oh no, you have the hiccups. Those are the worst kind of cups. <laughs> Except A cups. Uh. <laughs> I don't make the rules, everyone, that's just society. Uh. Or uh, other times, other times my daughter, she'll be asleep, she'll be asleep and wake up with a startle, like... And I go, oh no, you're having baby mares and you're not even a horse. <laughs> I know, I'm not proud of myself, I'm sorry, I'm not proud of myself. These... In my defense, these jokes are still in their infancy. <laughs> You're right, you're right. I should just go home and assemble an Ikea shelf. I know. Uh, but yeah, my daughter, she'll be sleeping. She'll have a baby mare. Wake up, see me, and realize this isn't a nightmare. This is reality. This guy's actually my dad. And then she really starts crying. But, uh, you know, my, my wife and I were actually, my wife and I were both Jewish. And uh, before we try to have a kid, we have to take a DNA test to make sure we don't have any Jewish genetic conditions. And the way the test works is the doctor takes some blood, sends it to a lab, and you get a bill. <laughs> and if you don't argue the bill, you don't have the disease. <laughs> because you're not Jewish. <laughs> I am, I, I'm excited to have a, you know, I'm excited to be a dad, but like, if I'm being honest, like, I'm also nervous and scared, you know, because being a parent's forever. Like, what if I stop liking it in a few years? I can't just put my daughter on Craigslist. Like, she's some used furniture. 
Now, only an sociopath would do such a thing. It would make for a great post, though. <laughs> Right, think about that for sale ad, like a white baby, barely used, mint condition, upscale Jewish brand, $10,000 or best offer. But you can't do that, right? No, this isn't Russia. Well, not yet. <laughs> That's right, any day now, it is happening any day. <laughs> Oh, God, indeed. I, I feel like you guys are getting offended on this. You know, I'm making jokes, but we're all on the same team, everyone. Team Putin. It's all one team. <laughs> but uh, my daughter, she is, she's actually an anchor baby. Uh, not because I don't have citizenship. No, but because she's weighing us down financially. <laughs> she is very adorable dead weight. <laughs> And I, I can't, you know, I, I can't afford to take my daughter to Disneyland. So what I do instead, I send her through to car wash. <laughs> Windows up, it's a better version of the teacups. Windows down, it's the log ride. <laughs> she comes out of the car wash. A bunch of guys dry off the car. She's surrounded by a group of men. It's the Tower of Terror. <laughs> It's a very pro-feminist joke if you think about it. But I, you know, recently I was complaining to a single friend of mine that nowadays a good baby stroller costs over $800. And my friend goes, oh, why don't you just get a cheap stroller and an expensive helmet? <laughs> so my friend will not be babysitting until we buy the helmet. And the same friend, when, when my wife was pregnant, he asked us, did we want a boy or a girl? And I answered honestly, I said a boy. And my friend goes, you should just want him to be healthy. And I was like, did you just set me up? <laughs> so you could feel like a good person? So after that, whenever someone would ask if we want a boy or a girl, I'd answer in code. I'd say, I want him to be healthy and pee standing up. <laughs> It's a very slow roller for some reason. <laughs> Everyone enjoyed it, but at a different time. <laughs> but you know, as a man, as a man, like having a daughter, I love my daughter, but like as a man having a girl, like it has me seeing things I never noticed before. Like I never realized how in our society, how important it is to be pretty. Like regardless of your politics, you have to admit if Hillary Clinton looked like Scarlett Johansson, no one give a damn about her emails. <laughs> They'd be like, oh my God, she emails? She's just like us. <laughs> and she set up her own server? She's so smart. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, when my wife was pregnant, uh, we took a bourbon class and uh, we failed it. <laughs> but at least I didn't need a class on how to get my wife pregnant. What's up? That was the worst high five we've ever, I've ever done in my life. Let's try that again. There you go. Yeah, I didn't like this bourbon class. Like at one point the instructor said, birth is a marathon of indeterminate length. So not a marathon. A marathon is a very determined 26.2 miles. And like, I don't know if our birth instructor, if she was super racist or just from Texas. <laughs> but she started saying these crazy things. Like at one point she said, yeah, Asians can't feel pain. <laughs> Which is wrong, but would explain karate. <laughs> She actually said that. She said Asians can't feel pain while we had four Asian people in our class. And they all laughed. Which proved her point. Not a single one said, that comment no good. It's a slightly racist anti-racism joke. It's and, you know, when my wife was pregnant, you know, I'd go to all the prenatal visits. And, and, and I, I remember one of the prenatal visits, uh, the nurse says, your baby keeps moving away from the ultrasound. 
So I say, maybe that's because my daughter doesn't want Big Brother listening in. That's pretty good for hospital humor, right? Yeah, this nurse gives me nothing. Pretend she didn't even hear me. So I turn to my wife. I'm like, come on, that was funny, right? And my wife's like, uh-huh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was respecting our daughter's right to privacy. <laughs> and the thing is, like, with comedians, when someone doesn't laugh at one of our jokes, it hurts our feelings. Even if it's in a hospital. But this nurse, she's in a customer-facing position. So to get my revenge, I just start being super annoying, and she has to take it. You know, I say, uh, excuse me, how much to upgrade this ultrasound to a mega sound? <laughs> if this sound is so ultra, why can't I hear it? Can only dogs hear it? Are we having puppies? And that's how I got banned from the prenatal unit. So after that, whenever my wife would go for her visits, I'd have to stay home and listen to our neighbors argue. Yeah, they're not doing well. I, I know, not just because of all the yelling, but because I opened their mail. <laughs> Those credit card bills are killing them. And uh, they're, they're actually also expecting a baby, uh, which I found out from opening their mail <laughs> and Googling their baby registry. And, you know, they were asking for a cheapo $100 stroller, so I bought them a helmet. <laughs> Like, I'd say my favorite thing about being married is now I can go to a bar and I don't have to pretend I'm having fun. <laughs> yeah, I could just be miserable in the corner and my chances of getting laid stay the exact same. <laughs> as long as we're home by 10. But the thing is, like, my wife, she thinks I'm a sex addict because I want to do it daily. And I told her I'm willing to compromise five times a week. And she says, that sounds like a job. And I'm like, yeah, because marriage takes work. At least we could work from home. And she says, I'd rather we video conference. And I'm like, don't make me find an intern who'll do this for the experience in college credit. I will do. But, uh, have you ever heard of the expression, couples who pray together stay together? few people. I think it's big in the Midwest and South. Couples who pray together stay together. You know, my wife and I, we don't pray, but we meditate. And uh, couples who meditate together still masturbate alone. <laughs> hum, hum, hum. <laughs> but yeah, I, I remember like when we first got together, my wife and I, we were doing it all the time. Then it went down. And when we got married, it actually went up a little. Uh, I know because I'm charting all of this. <laughs> a very extensive Excel spreadsheet for it. But like now, now we gotta put sex in our calendars twice a week. Yeah, it sucks. It feels like I'm on sex food stamps. <laughs> Where instead of showing my EBT card, I show my raw card. <laughs> I thought you laughed and groaned and looked down in horror all at the same time. <laughs> You know, this is scientifically true. By scientists, they've, they've done scientific studies that as a man, if you want to decrease your odds of getting prostate cancer, you should <clears throat> release at least five times a week. <laughs> yeah, so I told my wife, I told my wife, it's like you don't care if I get prostate cancer. I might as well start smoking to speed up what you're doing to me. <laughs> and she says, smoking's disgusting. And I'm like, well, maybe I wouldn't have to resort to this if you spent more time being disgusting in the bedroom. <laughs> that week, we didn't even do it once. <laughs> Pick your battles, everyone. Pick your battles. But no, we have a great relationship. And I'd say, here's what I've realized. Like, the more a couple posts lovey-dovey photos on Facebook, the worse their actual relationship. <laughs> You know, like, my wife and I, we posted one wedding photo, one baby photo, that's it. We actually love each other. But I have a friend, maybe I have one like this too. Anytime I'd see him in person, he'd be like, my wife and I haven't had sex in two years, I can't take this. Then online I'd see, I love my wife so much. She's the best. It's like he was trying to guilt her into being a better spouse. Or she kept hacking his account. <laughs> The next time I saw my friend, I thought, 
you're ruining our relationship because I see you lying. So now I don't want to sleep with you either. <laughs> That's what I thought, but all I said was, let's take a selfie. <laughs> and I captioned it, great hanging with my buddy today. Then I went home and told my wife what a piece of shit he is. Which is a real shit move on my part. It's just this endless cycle of lies. But as long as I seem happy to my fifth grade bully, it's all worth it. <laughs> but um, my wife, she gave me a good idea. So the next time I saw my friend posting about his lovely spouse, I left a comment. <laughs> I said, I'm so glad you were able to resolve all your marital problems. <laughs> since we last spoke <laughs> two hours ago. <laughs> so you know how Facebook will translate from different languages, from like Spanish to English or Hebrew to English or Russian to English? I wish they'd translate from bragging to honest English. <laughs> so when someone writes, I love being single! Translation, I'm so lonely. <laughs> or I love being married! I'm so lonely. Or I had an amazing comedy recording. <laughs> 40 people laughed, two people stared at me, and everyone else thought, why is it so cold in here? <laughs> so have you ever heard of this thing called the uh, backfire effect? No, so it's when you argue politics or something you care about. The more time you spend debating an issue, the more each side becomes convinced they're correct. Because you've come up with more and more reasons for your point of view. So the only way to change someone's mind is to over-agree with them. So a little while back, I'm talking to a guy who liked the new tax law. So I said, you know what? This tax bill doesn't go far enough. Poor people should pay a 90% tax rate. Because that'll teach them to work harder. Now let's go kick a bum. <laughs> and the guy was like, whoa, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I saw the backfire effect working. So I went home and told my wife, we should stop having sex. She said, okay. Damn. <laughs> the backfire effect backfired. <laughs> Uh, I, am, uh, I am glad, though. I'm glad I never thought that premarital sex was a sin. Because I lost my virginity three weeks before 9-11. <laughs> yeah, you know there's some super religious kid somewhere who lost his virginity September 10th. Going, oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> Totally worth it. <laughs> That's my darkest thing. It gets better from here, everyone. It gets better. But uh, this is going to be controversial too, but stick with me. Uh, I don't think that football players should take a knee before the national anthem. I think if you really want to protest, just stop playing sports until there's a new president. Like, think about it. No football, no basketball, no baseball. Hockey can still stay. No one watches that. <laughs> one person watches that. I stand corrected. <laughs> But yeah, you know, we'd have a new leader in two weeks because there'd be nothing to distract us from our boring lives. That's 52 Sundays a year you gotta spend with your kids. <laughs> and I, I said this the other night and someone in the crowd started booing me. And I was like, oh no, I pissed off someone really patriotic who missed my sarcasm and probably owns a lot of guns. <laughs> but turns out it was just Canadians mad I was making fun of hockey. <laughs> And, you know, like, I'm not pro-big government at all, but here's why some government regulation is needed. Because it took an, I don't know if you remember, but it took an act of Congress, an act of Congress, for us to be able to keep our cell phone number when switching phone companies. So what chances the environment have? <laughs> like, if I had to choose between saving my iPhone or all the whales... <laughs> I'd be like, sorry, Shamu. <laughs> Have you seen this new app? It's amazing. I swipe right and a robot burps my baby. 
I, I, I do remember that. Uh, I, I remember as soon as my daughter was born, minutes later, this nurse came in asking us to donate our baby's umbilical cord to science. Now, I don't even know why babies still have umbilical cords. <laughs> like, what is this, 1981? <laughs> yeah, we should have cordless babies. <laughs> It's like, oh, you got the baby eight plus? Well, uh, I got the baby 10. Mine has facial recognition. <laughs> and on the next day, my wife, she's still in the hospital and a different nurse, she's shown my wife how to breastfeed. And the nurse says, you could tell the baby's latching properly because she has a double chin. And I'm like, are we body shaming her already? <laughs> but I know my daughter, she's really well, like a, Yesterday, she drank her milk so fast, it looked like she was shotgunning a beer. I turned my back for one second, she's playing flip cup. I don't want to give her powder formula, because I'm afraid she'll snort it. Oh, come on, what's funnier than a baby using cocaine? Two babies shooting heroin, that is way funny. Yeah, you know, if you think about it, babies look like they're on heroin. Because they're always falling asleep in parks. They're nodding off, they're coming back, they're nodding off. Then they poop their pants with no warning. One time at a show, I was talking about this, and someone in the crowd yelled out, Actually, heroin makes you constipated. <laughs> And as I started to respond, he nodded off. <laughs> but uh, my daughter, she's been sleeping really well lately. Like, she, you know, she'll sleep for 12 straight hours. Like, she wears a diaper and doesn't move for 12 hours. She's like the ideal Netflix customer. <laughs> yeah, she'll sleep like 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. So uh, sometimes if I'm home around 11 at night, I'll go do a little open mic a block from my house while watching my baby on my phone's Wi-Fi camera. And like, yeah, technically she's alone. But it's a block away, so if I lived in a mansion, it'd still be the same house. I feel like 70% of you are on board. And some of you want to call child services right now. There's no point in calling child services, because I live a block away, so I'll get home first. You can't catch me. So a couple months back, I, I go to the open mic, and then I, I mention on stage the baby's alone. So afterwards, this comedian, who said her other job is stripping, because apparently being a comedian isn't degrading enough. <laughs> Strippers don't have to get recorded above a sushi shop, is my point. <laughs> so this stripper comedian, she comes up to me, and she's like, oh, do you really have a baby? I'm like, yeah. She's like, who's watching her now? I'm like, uh, the phone. <laughs> And she says, what about your wife? I'm like, oh, she's here too. Parenting's hard. We both needed a drink. <laughs> and the stripper says, oh my God, you're serious? You're a bad dad. You should be locked up. You're a bad dad. Yeah, I got judged by a stripper. <laughs> like, yeah, I neglect my daughter for an hour at a time when she's sleeping. But her dad neglected her for 18 straight years. <laughs> What is this, turning into a stripper convention now? You know, I got so upset by this, I shoved some singles in her pants. And now she's our new babysitter. That's right, I'm a good dad. I kept someone else's kid off the pole. That's a good dad. But now, thanks to our new babysitter, Sparkles. <laughs> He knows a couple of sparkles in his life, everyone. Yeah, now thanks to our new babysitter, Sparkles, my daughter, she can only fall asleep to the song, Pour Some Sugar On Me. <laughs> so we need a new babysitter. Before I got married, some women I dated, they loved it when I'd speak Russian in bed. Yeah, and I loved it uh, because I'd get all my complaints out. <laughs> without starting a fight. No, I'd be like, I need a visual because of the persuasion text. Peace, preachy. I hate when you text me for no reason. 
я бы лучше трахнул твою подружку. I'd rather be banging your friend. Я кончил пять минут назад. I finished five minutes ago. You know, now that I'm married, I still speak Russian in bed, but my complaints have changed. You know, now I'm like, не ты проверь ребенка. No, you check on the baby. Почему я всегда наверху? Эй, перестань храпеть. Why am I always on top? Hey, stop snoring. Да, мама хамила папе, но я кончил пять минут назад. Yes, mommy was mean to daddy, but I still finished five minutes ago. Now I can sleep through the night because I drank poison. Thank you so much. I'm Ben Rosenthal. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.